oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 we've got the four month sleep regression in the house. What's up? Oh, also the nearly four years old. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's the one they don't really tell you about. You're like, oh yeah, I have a toddler and everything's cool. And then they're like up at 1 a.m. and they want to watch the iPad. We did not give in though. I think you guys would be really proud of us. We did not give in to the iPad last night. He was up till 6 a.m. Uh, uh, asking us about trains, but we didn't want to give on the iPad. <laughs> uh, we have some good news. <laughs> um, we will eventually get sleep. That's the first good news. Second good news is we have, what do we have, Morgan? Um, we got a delivery today of puzzles. Uh, puzzles. Um, so Whoa. there's like a national oh, puzzle, okay. puzzle shortage going on. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but um, we have two more orders, hopefully, of puzzles coming. One arrived today from Seltzer Goods, which is a woman-owned company. Um, they make beautiful stuff, and they, um, they're they in the online shop. So go check those out. I link them in stories if you're looking for puzzles. Um, that's a great shop. And then we hopefully are getting one more order of the Cavallini puzzles in the tube, but I don't have a date on that yet. So, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to convince Arlie to let me make puzzles. Oh my gosh. I mean, it, it makes sense because you're, you know, we have a press, we could print it, but um, we don't have a means to cut the puzzles. And that's the kind that's part of that's kind of freaking me out a little bit. But maybe we could do it. I don't know. We're gonna stick to anything. we're gonna stick to coloring books first. So we're working on a couple of those, um, but we also have some um, brand new Jenny's ice cream in our online shop. If you are local, you can check out, and we can do a curbside pickup. Or um, I don't know how, how else does any of that stuff work. Yeah, it's in the stories. Just watch it. Oh, um, I apparently wasn't paying attention. So yeah, just listen to Morgan. Curbside pickup. It's on there. You can come pick it up. Um, so check it out in the stories. All right, cool. Well, um, today, folks, we have a very special um, part of our hand lettering class that um, I have to be honest, I've never taught this part before. Um, we have done our lettering class in this sans serif, serif, and script styles all over all over the place, but um, I've never taught a class just specifically designated to um, flourishes. Uh, paper design paper. Are there die cutters that you could send the print to for die cutting the printed pieces? Let me tell you about that. Let, let Morgan tell you about that. There are seven manufacturers of puzzles in the United States. They are all closed right now. So I know Rolly's really sad about it. Most puzzles are coming from overseas. No surprise there, but there are seven U.S. manufacturers and they're all closed right now. Been working on the research on this. Um, some, two of them laser cut puzzles, the other two die, or the other five die cut, but it doesn't even matter because they're not open. And they're not the kinds of places you could send your, like, letterpress design to and have them yeah, it's all in -house. die cut it. They manufacture and design their own products. Oh my so God, Julia just joined. Julia! Um, it's not something that, like, we could just send them. Here's a hundred prints. Could you turn them into puzzles? So we've been talking with folks um, about laser cutting. And I just don't know, like, there's so much we're trying to keep up with. So product development at the same time is definitely, um, it's a lot. It's so challenging, yeah. We'll see about the puzzles. I'm not sure about those. It is kind of like an adventure. You know, you're like, oh, let's see, you know, you have an idea. Oops, hold on a second. You have an idea. And in any other sort of circumstances, you'd be that you'd like call up, you know, your suppliers or your, you know, folks. And you get stuff done, but now it's like, are they open? Are they available? Are we even able to get uh, materials? You know, Morgan was on the phone with our paper supplier late one night, trying to see what's in stock and the thickness, and um, uh, you know, just trying to make that happen. Paper Design Paper says, I can ask the die cutter in my area and see if he has any leads. That would be great. That would be super helpful. Thank it you is, so much. It is great. Um, so part of what's really complicated about die cutting a puzzle is that the die is so complex. To make the die um, is thousands and thousands of dollars to make something complex enough. Yeah, you think about the pieces are like, you know, the little curves are like so tiny. So making a die for puzzle cutting is really hard. And then also you don't get a lot of use out of one die because 
you're cutting the really thick, hard tree base paper. So it's like, think about how hard a tree is, and you're using that kind of paper, it's really thick, to be cut with like a knife. Um, so you don't get a lot of use out of each die, and you can't really like resharpen them and reuse them. Um, so it's very, it's very interesting to learn all this stuff about puzzle making, and also, um, it's just interesting to see what things have gone offshore and how that technology has changed and what's available in our country and even thinking about medical gear and things like that. Um, I love that stuff, so. Um, <laughs> it is a little bit that's, crazy. That's a puzzle update. We, it, and it is a puzzle in itself, getting that all figured uh, out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys know us and our work, you know that we've always tried to you know, be creative and innovative and, and try to do new things. But um, yeah, puzzles are one of those things where are like, wow, that's really a sort of complicated thing to make. So maybe we want to make them. Um, all right, so as I was saying before, um, we are doing flourishes today, which is super exciting. Um, I was telling Morgan, I was like, I'm a little nervous about this class because as you can see, I'm kind of like fogging up over here. I'm more nervous about teaching flourishes because A, I've never taught them before, and B, it's kind of like this very uh, kind of intuitive thing for me. Um, I tend to, um, you know, just kind of go make it up as I go along kind of thing. Uh, we had an intern uh, when we were back in, in Rhode Island. Um, her name was Tammy, Tammy Ann Tan. She was an incredible uh, lettering artist. Tammy, if you're out there, we love you and I want you to know we learned so much from you. She was great. She did a lot of pointed pen calligraphy um, and she, she used like a lot of very sort of traditional flourishes and I would just like look at them and be like, wow, those are so beautiful, you know? And But there was definitely like a system, right? There was like, Flourish A, Flourish B, Flourish C that you would choose from. Um, and sometimes, you know, I've, I've gotten better at using those flourishes, but um, sometimes it helps me to just be like, okay, what's gonna look best in this context? And to go with that rather than being like, okay, I'm gonna choose this Flourish C that I know exists um, because it, it might work. Um, I was doing a little bit of research today to kind of sharpen my, my flourishing skills. And I came across this website that has a bunch of information about making flourishes. And I got totally overwhelmed. <laughs> so if you are here today and you're like, I've never done flourishes before, I'm kind of freaking out. Don't worry, you're not alone. I do flourishes and I'm freaking out because <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can you can look at it and be like, oh my gosh, how are you gonna how do you even wrap your head around that? Um, but I assure you that the 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 best approach to flourishes is to really draw upon your intuition and um, and and tr and really trust yourself in those occasions. And the best way to to feel more confident in that is to really really practice. And the more you practice the more you'll get used to these repetitive uh, motions that you're gonna be making. And so it'll be in your, your sort of toolbox already when you're, when you're growing, you'll be like, oh yeah, and then I'm gonna make this kind of flourish because that's the one I've kind of done before and I feel comfortable doing that. Um, so don't be freaked out. It's easy to get freaked out about flourishes. I'm not trying to like m make you scared or anything, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're gonna go through this together today. My first flourishing class. So. Morgan's gonna grab the phone from me. Thank you. And um, I'm gonna try to set things Can up. Can you get over your here. screen ready? Oh, yes. I need this over here. All right. Sometimes I never know if Geo has grabbed my iPad before class and started playing trains on it or something. So, oh, he's an adventure. What is on my iPad now? I'm seriously so excited about those Jenny's ice creams. Did you bring any home for us to sample? They're arriving on Thursday, so they're available for pickup on Friday. Okay, awesome. Um, and I tagged all the ones on the website that are gluten-free as gluten-free. Oh, nice. As like a gluten-free person, um, I didn't realize how many I had ordered that were gluten-free. And we have two dairy-free options too. One dairy-free gluten-free for you folks. Is that the peanut butter and jelly one, or is that? It is the one? coconut cream cold brew. Oh yes. Um. So 
that one's coming. We have all the new flavors like pineapple upside down cake, the jelly donut one. I mean, if you guys don't know about Jenny's ice cream, you gotta look her up. G, I'm oh, sorry, J E N I, Jenny's ice cream. They're based in Ohio, woman owned company. Just the most incredible. Fucking badass. Yeah. Listen to their, like, how, what's that guy podcast? How I started this, how I run this. Eh, I don't know. That business one. Hey, anybody out there? Do you know? Hey, anybody. Hey, internet. Yeah, like, how I how I run this. What, what's that one? <laughs> The podcast. Where's my line podcast? It's great. It's an hour long interview with business owners about um, how they started their business, and I love it. I'll try to think about what it is. How I built this. That's what it's called. <laughs> um, listen to the one with Jenny from Jenny's Ice Cream. Um, it is so, How I Built This. Thanks, Valerie. The one with Jenny is amazing. I love it. Um, Thank you, Julia. How I Built This. Yes. I love the one with Jenny Britton Bauer, though, who's the founder of Jenny's Ice Cream. And she's a total badass and inspiration. Um, Morgan spends her time listening to podcasts about how to start businesses, and I just look on the internet at pictures of cats. Takes takes both of us, honey. Yeah, I'm grateful for her. I don't know if I really contribute as much as she contributes to all this, but oh, stop! That's not nice to yourself. But anytime you guys need a picture of a cute little cat, we our best selling cards have cats. We love cats over here. Um, so all you cool cats and kittens, speaking of cats, let's get started with some flourishes. Okay, so, uh, there are five, actually I'm going to take this little, uh, script line thing off here, and I'm just going to kind of write some notes here so you guys can kind of bear with me. There are five, oops, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Oops. A little bit bigger, okay. Five types of full. Oh, actually, I should flourishes. <clears throat> there we go. That's more, you know, appropriate that I actually give flourishes to the flourishes. All right. So, um, you know, if you've been following this class, you know, there's like, you know those, you know, every time I would draw a letter, you know, I would say, okay, so you have your M, you have the, the, the entrance point and the en uh, exit point of a letter to really do some uh, nice little um, flourishy type things. Um, so this list kind of goes through those places and those opportunities to do that. Okay, so we have our, um, so like upper loops, and that would also be considered like um, for uh, letters that have an ascender. So uh, your L's, B's, H's, K's, um, D's. So, um, you know, for example, you can do a letter D and do it like that. You can really draw out those top points. It doesn't always have to be a loop, but the loops can be um, kind of cool. And you can draw those out and do creative things with this. This looks like a giant E, so it's an L. That's more like it. Uh, next one is lower loops. Or words that have a descender. So for example, that would be uh, lowercase g's, uh, lowercase z's, like we did yesterday. Let me finish that little thing there, yep. Uh, lowercase y's, uh, lowercase j's. So anything with these little descenders here, um, those are actually kind of like the most fun too. I, I feel like I have way more fun with uh, descender loops than I do with the upper loops. The upper loops can be a little tricky sometimes because you're kind of trying to start from a, uh, you're trying to like um, do it before you draw the letter in the word. So it can be a little tricky, but the lower loops are kind of like, yeah, I just nailed that Y, that was awesome. Ooh, yeah, now I get to do a loop, woo -hoo. I'll leave that over. Okay, so then the third opportunity 
is these um, T crossbars. Um, and that is, you know, if you have a lowercase T, do something like that. There's, you know, or you can just have something simple like that. Um, you can also use these T crossbars to um, connect to other parts of your word. Um, you can use them as an opportunity to, uh, you know, create a little tittle at the end if you have an I, you know. Um, and also, you can use, you know, if you have upper loops or lower loops or any of these other uh, flourishes, you can also use those flourishes. You know, let's say you have uh, a T. I'm just wearing the tongue. T O N. Um, let's say you have one of these other loops in your in your layout. You know, that can kind of come across. Or, you know, that can be connected to something else from up here and come down and cross your T. I'm sorry, that was a little bit of a, um, a sort of long-winded way to explain that. But yeah, you can use other flourishes to create those T crossbars. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then, of course, we have the um, end of the word. Uh, so you have like word. I'm gonna do this all. And then of course the last one is the beginning. And that would be something like that. So um, these are those five places where you are more than likely able to um, create that sense of flourish or embellishment. Um, so that's, those are kind of like the little rules here that we're gonna um, go by. Um, create a new little layer here. Hide that. Ooh, what did I just do? Hello. Oh man, did I just? Man, I swear. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, at the bottom. I've saved every class on these layers, except for the class uh, of the letter W. So if you guys have been following this class on our uh, YouTube channel and you have are looking for the W class, that is uh, somehow just evaporated into thin, the thin air of the internet. Um, so I really ap apologize for the lack of that W there, but um, everything else should be up on our YouTube channel, and that link is in our bio if you need um, if you need that. Okay, so we are going to draw some um, upper loops. We're gonna get started with those upper loops. So let's put on our script lines here. If you guys have downloaded this um, guide from our website. Um, we have that available for free. You can download it, you can print it out, or you can use it as like a background if you're using an iPad or if you're on your, using a tablet or something. Um, but let's go through um, the letter um, L uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how that, actually, you know what, I'm gonna do a letter um, B. Okay, so normally the way you would draw your letter B Oh, I changed my life right here. Okay. Normally how you draw your letter B, oops, go all the way up to the ace underline, sorry about that. You draw your B like that, right? So your B has these two points, the entrance and the exit points, but also if you look at it, it also has this sort of top area that can be really drawn out to do something really kind of beautiful. So for example, you could start your B um, and beginning of a word with like this kind of outward flourish here and then continue on. It doesn't even have to be the beginning of a word. You can have 
um, you know, an, a, another letter coming down beneath it and just kind of end it there and then just kind of jump back up and start over. You see what I mean? It does like this, this O doesn't necessarily have to connect to that B, but if you are doing this sort of flourish like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw those two together. You know what I mean? I would end that O and then I would pick up my pen and I would draw that B um, sort of as a beginning. Now, you may ask yourself, like, why would I do want to do something like that? Um, if you have um, a word, um, you know, like, let's say you have a word like stub. It's a perfect word for hand lettering. <laughs> stub. Well, I was thinking stub your toe, but yeah, you know what I mean, sure. <laughs> So we have STU. I've picked up my pen. I'm kind of filling this up. Now I also have here this nice little T crossbar. So what I want to do with that is I want to come across and give myself that flourish from the B and also cross my T at the same time. So that would be an occasion where you would sort of pick up your pen. You'd stop at your U you would pick up your pen and you would sort of draw out that nice tail of the A center of the B. Um, and in this case, you know, you have that crossbar of the T, but you could also just kind of end it here, you know, almost as if it looked like that. And um, just keep it, keep it there. But I hope that makes sense. Sometimes it's nice to um, just use those uh, little opportunities to um, add some interest to your word, especially if you're you know, writing the word stub, as you probably do all the time. Um, all right, so another way that we would draw those um, uh, flourishes, and you know, this is kind of, you. so let me back up a little bit. When I, when I was, I was doing some practice sheets before I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was drawing on both sides. I'm like, okay, how do I, I like, I really wanted to understand like the, the science behind my tendencies for drawing flourishes. And I just really wanted to point out that there are some letters that have this natural, um, uh, this natural flow to them that I think you really have to um, just like kind of pay attention to and, and be, uh, cognizant of as you're drawing these, le these letters. So for example, let's look at these two different examples, right? So you have the B and your natural tendency, because there's this loop here, your natural tendency, I'm going to get a different color here so you guys can see. So your natural tendency is to kind of go around loop and loop and loop, right? Because you're starting with that loop. Um, but as you can see, you can also sort of take this loop and then sort of uh, disrupt that loop and come back as a sort of wave, sort of um, a sort of like wave uh, shape almost. So those are the two things to be aware of. You want to really try to make sure that your um, your crossbars are kind of like almost like ninety degrees almost. Um, and you, the that sort of angle of that loop really dictates that that um, that that angle. Is it loops have angles? It's like a, it's not an angle. It's like a di diameter or flow. Axis. No, not axis. You know, it's you know this word has has, has a. There's a word. Yeah, just like the the flow of that loop, right? You have a question. Okay, what's your question? Um, what about uppercase B's? Do they stay by themselves? Uppercase E's? B as in ballerina. Uppercase B as in ballerina. Do they stay by themselves? Um, uh, you know what? That's up to you. Let me draw one so you guys can see. So, or I'll draw two. Um, the way that I draw my B's... Something like that, right? And then we fill it in our contrast. Ooh, angle of intersection. Angle of intersection. Bam. Love you guys. So the way that I draw my bees, I'm not left with a very easy um, 
attachment. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't usually kind of come back around there because I start here and then I end here. Um, Your flourish is on that end part. Yeah, the flourish is on this beginning left-hand side. So that is the beautiful thing about that B. But I guess you could do a B. Let's see. Let me, let me, um, let's, let's try this here, folks. Let's just draw the, sp uh, the spine. I don't like that at all. Hold on. I don't want to redraw that. All right. So you could just start with the spine. You could add um, your bowls from that left-hand side and then come back out and then start almost as if you're, you know, you're doing your lowercase b from that same angle of, you see how that kind of flips up a little bit? It flips up from that loop. Um, so yeah, those are uh, a couple different options for your uppercase B. I tend to do it this way because I, I don't often connect my uppercase letters with my lowercase letters, um, but sometimes it is convenient and sometimes it looks better that way. And in that case, I would do something like this. But that's a really good question. Um, you know, with hand lettering, there is definitely one you know, more than one way to skin a cat and, or draw a capital B in this uh, instance. So um, you just really want to make sure that it's legible and it's beautiful and it feels very natural for you. So if this kind of um, solution works better for you, I say go for it. Um, but the nice thing about this too is that you have one, two areas of um, embellishment and flourish where this one kind of only gives you one. Um, and the nice thing about this uh, other uppercase B, let me see if I can draw this down here. Um, so we'll draw our little spine. Again, fill that in. And then I think you could probably do something like that. Sorry, these bowls are not drawn very well. I was getting excited about what I was gonna do next. Those bowls are very not good, but um, now, At least I have a word with a little bit of a undulating baseline. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, where was I? We were doing these um, loop exercises. Okay, so yes. So um, while you guys are doing your flourishes, just really be aware of this, um, this sort of momentum that you have as you're going around your loop. Um, the tendency is to kind of, uh, once you have a loop, to sort of loop and loop and loop into eternity, and you can do that, but also feel free to be able to sort of disrupt that loop and come back down. So those are the sort of two directions. You can either go back up or you can go back down from that top loop. Um, some other sort of um, filigree ornamental um, embellishments that you can do. Um, let's see, we were doing our B. So, uh, you could do something like, you can really, you know, create a loop up here. It almost looks like a little bouffant, looks like a hairdo. That's a little silly. Um, you can also do um, something like, and again, that is, you know, using that sort of lasso kind of style. Actually, this is not a really good example because I don't know if you've noticed, I have kind of interfered with this um, mean line space, this X height space. You see that, where that happens there? Uh, that is not ideal because what I wanna do is keep that, uh, keep that flourish on the top part. I don't want to, because I'm drawing a B, I don't want to get into that zone and start mucking up that area. You see how that gets a little bit um, hairy and a little bit just muddy down there? You want to keep your flourishes up, up above the belt here, folks, because this area down here is sweet, sweet, legible space, and you want to maintain that sacred area. So let's try doing that one again. There we go. That's more like it. Now this could also be a solution if you have a, um, a T occurring later in the word and you want to draw that out and connect those two that way. So um, just 
just yeah, so as you can see, it's like a little bit of a Fire truck, or that's not a fire truck. What is that? A garbage. It's a garbage truck. How silly! Oh. Bye, garbage truck. There's a very, very big orange garbage, garbage truck. So we have um, those exercises with those uh, ascender loops. Garbage man. Excuse me, Mr. Garbage man. Um, can you pick up the garbage that's in the living room? We have, we have a lot of garbage in that living room. Can you go pick that up over there, please, sweetie? Please. Can you pick the garbage up in the living room, those magnet tiles? Um, this is a garbage truck. Yeah, I need that garbage truck to work in the living room, please, okay? But, but it was just on the skyscraper. Oh, it was cleaning up the skyscraper? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a big job, huh? Good job. Okay, can I, can, hey, hon. Yeah, right here. Can you help Gio um, load up his, gar his garbage truck with some magnet tiles in the living room, please? Yeah. Oh, I did a no race. No. And, and he's doing a race. Garbage truck races. Watch out. So you have this, um, those styles that I just showed you. Those would apply to our uh, uppercase um, Bs. Those are our uppercase D's. And I love doing a tail like this with our upper, with my uppercase D. I actually tend to draw that more than um, a D that has a, a bowl like that, or a loop, I'm sorry. Let me fill those in so you can see. So those D's, I, I just really like the way they kind of come down and just kind of give the rest of your word a hug. Um, and, I, and I feel like that I find in, in my work that there's a lot of words that end in the letter D. So it's, it, it occurs a lot. So it's one of those letters that are gonna be really easy to practice um, because it's gonna occur a lot in your work. But we have, let me, let me try doing these again, okay. Um, for a more complete list, we have our uh, Bs, our D's, our um, H's, our uppercase K, or lowercase K's, I'm sorry, and of course our L's. Okay. So that is our list of letters with that nice um, ascender loop opportunities. Next, we have our descender loops, and these are gonna be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys have this paper in front of you, this uh, lined, um, angled paper, you know, now is the time to really practice these loops, really fill up these lines with um, one example, just so you can kind of get the hang of that practice. Um, if you um, just want to loosen up your hand, there's some really good exercises. Oops. You can do something like just drawing your loops over and over and over again. And that'll just help you get into the, the habit of making kind of uh, similar angles. You can see how, you know, I, this was pretty consistent, but then this kind of started to get, this started, started going this way, and this is kind of, not, not really great. So really practicing those loops, filling in a whole line of loops will really, um, you know, loosen up your hand and get you uh, sort of in the mood for uh, doing some flourishes. Uh, so let's do some lowercase letters now. Um, let's do the letter Y. So on a normal day, our lowercase y looks something like this. Now again, we have this loop, and our natural tendency is to kind of come back down around, right? Because you're already sort of heading in that direction. You see, kind of going boop, like that already. But um, as I showed you before, you can disrupt that um, you can disrupt that um, 
motion, that momentum, and really draw it out. And these um, letters are really great for um, if you're at the beginning of a word to draw it out and give yourself a nice flowing baseline. Uh, you know, underneath that word, really use it to, um, uh, you know, create a beautiful little flourishy bed that sits under your word. But also, they're really great for, um, you know, if you have like Y's and letters like a G, um, what are usually are found, like, well, not usually, but a lot of them are found at the end of the word. So um, you can use them to come back around and create that little underscore of the word really nicely. This, and I don't know if it's confusing because it's kind of interfering with this line here, but um, it's, it's a good example to show you that, um, you know, as I was drawing this, I kind of wanted to just, you know, I saw this opportunity, I saw this sort of 90 degree angle, um, and I wanted to just kind of like um, even that out. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about when, when teaching flourishes is kind of hard because it's so intuitive. You know, um, it really depends on what is in front of you, what's, um, what's in front of the, the, the letter, what's behind the letter, um, what's going to be happening um, in the space beneath it, what's happening in the space above it. Um, and it really just has a lot of, um, it really just relies a lot on the confidence of your hand, you know? Um, and what I'm really trying to do today is show you, you know, what letters are able to do, you know, what letters are open and available for these opportunities. But um, really, the, the best practice is just going to be you sitting here um, doing some swirls and um, figuring out what feels good with your hand the most, you know. I'm going to show you some of these, you know, common, um, common flourishes, but um, you may find that you have designed your own that you feel really good about and those you know are more preferable to you than the ones that I'm showing you so lesson of the day have faith in yourself you can do it I believe in you and your flourishes look amazing okay all right so going back to our whys we have uh, the Y the uh, D center that just kind of comes down we have the descender that kind of flows through. We have a descender that comes back. Um, and you'll see that this, um, this sort of like figure eight shape uh, really reoccurs very frequently in, in my work and in a lot of the calligraphers work. So that's a good shape to, uh, to practice. It's a sort of a infinity shape, almost like a squashed um, L uppercase L almost. So that's a good pra um, shape to practice. We're gonna keep drawing some uh, flourishes with this descender. Um, we I can do a Y that looks like, something like that. I draw that quite often. That's just kind of looping onto itself. So this, is, this would be a good example for like a Y that's like right in the middle of a word where you don't have a lot of space on the you know, in front of you or behind you, but you really want to add some sort of localized, um, localized embellishment where you are. Um, but yeah, I feel like let's do a word, um, and I'll show you sort of how that that sort of descender flourish at the end of a word can really just make it so nice. Um, um, Let's do cutlery. <laughs> now, I have this L here. I probably You know, kind of looking at that now, I wonder if I should maybe 
erase that and try to connect that to my T. I was thinking, oh, it might be nice to have a T and a Y and a, a word, but I didn't really think about that L. So let me finish this, the thick parts here. And I'm gonna Now, I realize if you're at home, that might be a little tricky to do, but just bear with me. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to stop my T here at the bottom. Actually, I'm gonna erase this a little bit more. That's not exactly, okay. So, I would do something like this. This one's in celery, too. Celery. All right. So now we have that nice L in the middle of word that's disjointed from the T, it's disjointed from the E, but the um, A center loop has come, come back and crossed that T. So that is a nice little, uh, a nice way to, to bring those flourishes out into the middle of your word while making it seem uh, still very fluid and still very, um, you know, very much in that momentum of the word. Um, so don't be afraid to, uh, you know, draw out the, the baseline of that letter, you know, drawing that T down into almost like the descender line and making the L slightly down below that baseline. Because what it's doing now is it's just filling up that space so nicely and the T is kind of wrapping around. It's almost sort of sandwiching this word with the flourishes, which is such a nice, like, cozy feeling. I love when, when I have a, a, an A center flourish and a D center flourish. I really just like the way that that kind of complements the word. Um, so that would be an example of, a, of those two flourishes working together. Um, and now that we're on the subject of the sort of crossbar T's, we can do a little bit more with that. Um, I like sweet and Hello. So um, with the lowercase t, um, that is going to be one of your sort of biggest um, opportunities for, um, you know, doing some really creative stuff in this sort of upper A center top word area. Um, you know, as I said before, you can really use it to interact with some other A center um, letters. But if you have a t, you know, at the end of a um, uh, of a word, for example, you know, you can do a very ornamental T that just kind of like, this is, all, it's, this just kind of reminds me of like a little cloud almost that's just kind of like billowing in to, and just like nestling your, your word. Like, it's just kind of pulling the, the covers up and just saying goodnight, you know what I mean? It's just like, ah, that's the sort of cozy, cozy sweater for the rest of that word. Uh, but if you are having your T at the beginning of the word, you know, you can also use that sort of cozy um, embellishment on the uh, front part too. That's a little bit close. There you go. You can go down below beneath that word, or that letter, I'm sorry, that's really, that's a really nice uh, treatment. Um, also, you know, you can feel free to do, uh, to take that crossbar up into, you know, the upper zone too. It doesn't always have to come down beneath that baseline. It can come up. Um, and the trick is, is to just really try to um, be very, very, very quick, keep that momentum, keep that rhythm going, um, and try to make your um, loops nice and loose. You know, you don't want them too, too terribly tight um, or I shouldn't say tight, but too um, sort of uh, labored. You see that? You know, when I kind of stop and I kind of really try to focus on that um, loop, it just gets really gunky. So, um, you know, really try to create that nice big oval, that wide open oval shape. Um, I heard once that, you know, you really want to try to make these smaller oval shapes and larger oval shapes. Um, so if you notice in uh, calligraphy, you will see a lot of just sort of um, intended 
oval shapes. You know, you have the oval shape kind of here, this oval shape kind of here. Um, and that is the way that a lot of people uh, approach flourishes. Um, oh my gosh, we are almost out of time. This is crazy. I, there's so much you can talk about flourishes. There's like, well, you can keep going and you don't have to end flourishes in one day. That's true. What do you guys think? Should we do more flourishes? Should we do a couple days of flourishes maybe? T comment, comment and let us know what you think. If, if this is helpful or if this is crazy. Do you need more? Do you need more time with flourishes? Let me know. Um, because I feel like I could use more time with flourishes. Um, there's still so much to cover. Um, but maybe what we'll do with this last remaining like 10 minutes or so is do a couple of examples so that you can kind of see the flourishes in context. People say yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Let's do some more words that have, um, and, and give them some flourishes. I'm going to give myself a new layer here. One of the word, um, the words that I was practicing was the word watered. We're trying to grow some seeds and I think I was just in my head. Um, so we have, you know, the word watered, right? That's how it sort of looks if you just kind of sketch it out. And if you sort of sketch it loosely, you have this. So, you know, this might be a good exercise is to just kind of draw your basic word here and, and really try to assess where these um, level layers of flourishes can exist. And because this is just like a very cursory sort of sketch, you know, there's no, you know, no commitment. You can draw over it. You can copy and paste it if you're on a digital device. But maybe what you want to do is experiment. Actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy and paste this so that I can do this over and over. Okay, so my first example, what we'll do is I will take that W, cross my T with it. I'm actually going to move these guys down. Uh oh, what's going on here? Let's move this down a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of that line. Okay, so with this example, I just wanted more vertical space to work here. Uh, so with this example, I have actually drawn the beginning of that W to connect with my T, but now I also have this D uh, that I'm like, okay, well, I could have also crossed the T with my D as well, but now what I might do is kind of just kind of hover over it a little bit and create that sort of uh, it's just, it almost looks like a wave that's swirling into itself. And I'm looking at this word and okay, I'm like, all right, I have a lot of stuff going on up here in the upper space, but what about the lower space? Well, I have this D that has a terminal, right? And with this terminal, you can do some beautiful things with. So you can draw this out, you can take it, oh, <laughs> and be careful, I don't wanna. And this is a little bit uh, gl gl gloppy right here, but this is just this kind of initial sketch so I can kind of plot out my areas of flourish and, and so that when I draw this in a more final version, I know where those flourishes are gonna go. But let's, let's, um, let's look at this version up here and let's do something a little bit different. So like I said before, this D could have been the, the crossbar on the T, so let's do that. And that would be a little bit tricky to try to get. And that's what I said is like with the D, with the flourishes that kind of come before the the letter, um, you're you're trying to draw it and then really meet it, which is can be kind of tricky, but it's not impossible. Um, but here we have the T crossed by the D, and then with our W, we can uh, underline the word like that, and we can also perhaps. Um, use the terminal of the D 
to, let's see, what should we do there to kind of balance it? The whole idea is really to balance that word, right? So you have sort of some flourishes over here. You have flourish on the top here. You could do something like that if you want. But what I'm gonna to try to do is just kind of echo this sort of round shape on the beginning of the word. And, eh, I don't really like that. Maybe that's better. Okay, just something simple like that. Um, and you know, with this, with this D, you can even loop that up even further and draw that even further towards the front of that word. But I think, you know, after doing these two exercises, I think I would like to uh, move forward with this idea. So let's draw a more, uh, a, a more finished version that looks closer to that. All right, so now we're gonna, so this W is starting not here, but we're actually gonna start here, right? So, I actually, am, that's a little too low. I'm gonna do it again, okay. Nope. See how this can be a little tricky? Okay. Now I'm noticing that this crossbar is down below my uh, mean line. So that's just a little tricky. I'm gonna to try to do that again. That should be better. doing with that D? Okay, yep, I'm going to come back around. Oops, nope. Hold on. I want to make that more uh, connected to my E, so I'm going to redraw that E. And how's that D ending? Okay, yep, so I'm going to kind of go down beneath. All right, something like that. Now, it's not perfect, um, but as you can see, that's the sort of process that I go through when I'm working with serifs, or serifs, flourishes. I just wanna sort of uh, scheme it out, sketch it out, feel, you know, try out some different opportunities, see what feels best to you, and then implement it. Um, I would recommend that you don't, I would recommend against like drawing something in pencil and then tracing it because then that's just gonna, you know, you're just gonna sit, be sitting there. Let me show you. You're just gonna be sitting there with your pen trying to retrace and then, you know, look at the, those two lines. Your original, your original gesture is gonna be so much more fluid and so much better than anything you try to trace. So if it helps you to trace to just kind of get the gesture down, um, I would say go for it. But um, in any sort of finished piece, I would rely on the movement of your hand to create that final flourish. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can, if I can find any time to um, put together a little sheet of some just like ge basic general um, flourishes that I do in my work. I think that might be helpful. Um, but th there's just so many, you know, and it's kind of hard to just be like, okay, these are the, these are the flourishes to use because I just find that I, uh, you know, they just get mixed up to, to just suit the, the flavor. Um, but I will try to do that, um, you know, in my spare time. <laughs> um, well, weren't you also going to work on like a, for each letter, someone had asked if you would make a sheet like for A of the different kinds of yes. letters? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Two. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm working on that, folks. Um, as you probably know, um, we are trying to run our business at the same time and raise our three children. And I get maybe like 15 minutes to myself during the day, and I try to squeeze in a shower and a bathroom break. Um, but... 
<laughs> you're doing a great job, Riley. You're trying. doing a great oh job. It is, this has been a, this has been a, a challenge for sure. But um, we, uh, I'll, I will try to do that. I'm not sure when I can guarantee that those pages will be online, but I will try to do them as quickly as possible because I agree that would be super helpful. Um, we're gonna continue this flourishing class uh, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Colorado time. That's one o'clock California time, four o'clock p.m. New York time, three o'clock Chicago time. Uh, so tune in on Instagram Live. We'll be here again. If you guys missed any classes, it's on YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel. That is the link is in our bio. Um, if you guys like this class and you're getting a lot from it, we do have a U um, YouTube. Yeah, we have a YouTube channel, but we also have a Venmo. So if you are finding yourself, um, you know, with a couple extra bucks or something, and you want to throw them our way for this class, um, we have a Venmo. Morgan, you want to show that on the screen? Oh, I just want to say, you don't have to Venmo us anything. Yeah. And also, like, yeah, yeah, we just understand, and we just want you yeah. to enjoy the class. Yeah. So, but, but also, also would be we helpful, would, so. yeah, totally. And also, we would be remiss if we didn't say, here's how you can send some bucks our way if you didn't. So, thank you for understanding that we feel like we need to say this, and thank you for not feeling guilt if you are not in a position to yeah. send anything our way. It and thank you if you have, yeah. and yeah. thank you for all reasons. Yeah. And, Hang it, in there, everybody. It feels weird to ask for money, so we're, we feel weird. Don't worry. We feel weird about it. Um, so but weird. we love you guys, and we are so grateful that you are on this flourishing journey with us. This is so fun. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll do some more flourishing, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye, everybody. And...